Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Adoption Engagement Forum for 29th of September 2023. I'll start with the usual reminders for, for anyone new to the group or anyone new who's watching the recording to please join our Slack uh, workspace, Open Active Slack workspace. And there's a link there on the slide, and, and there'll be a link to this slide deck in the description if you're catching up with the meeting recording, so you can click through to it there. Um, it's a great place to uh, keep in touch with what's going on in the Open Active community um, and all the updates for these for these community meetings, what's going on, what, uh, what the next agendas and next meeting dates and all that sort of thing. And it's also a good place to ask any questions or, or um, have conversation with other members and other people in the community. Um, so, yeah, please do join us there. Um, I'll uh, begin the meeting with the usual round of introductions just uh, to help anyone new to the group or, or new watching on the recording get to know everyone in the um, community. So I'll start with myself. My name is Tim Corby and I'm a consultant at the Open Data Institute and I'm part of the Open Active team here at the ODI, which is funded by Sport England to uh, steward the Open Active initiative. Um, and so uh, keeping that theme, I'll uh, hand over to Darren, who's uh, also here at the ODI. Yeah, hi, morning, everyone. Good to meet you. Um, I'm Darren Temple. I'm also a consultant at the ODI wearing more of a technical hat in the Open Active project. So I'm helping with some of the um, tech development behind the scenes. And I'll be presenting a tool that um, Howard, our tech lead, and I have worked on over the last few months in this session. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Darren. And as you mentioned, Tim, I'll uh, then go to Howard next. Hello, everyone. Uh, Howard Askew. Uh, data technologist at the ODI, uh, leading on some of the technical aspects of the Open Active Initiative and, and various other projects that we work on. So uh, I, I know most people, but I'm camera off today because I'm, I'm not feeling too great. Thanks, Howard. Hope you're feeling better soon. And I guess in the interest of completeness, I'll, uh, I'll go to Kanika next, uh, who's also at the ODI. Hello, everyone. I'm the impact lead at ODI, and I am with the Open Active Project for as a monitoring and evaluation specialist. I have uh, uh, presented in this forum before for the first period of reporting, and I'll be soon presenting, hopefully, for the second period of reporting as well uh, for the phase five of the project. Uh, back to you, Dan. Great. Thank you very much, Kenneka. Um, Jules, I'll come to you next. Uh, hi, yes, I'm Jules. I'm from York Sport Foundation. I'm the communications manager and I've been talking about Open Active for seven years now. Brilliant. Yeah, a long standing member of the community. Um, and uh, your colleague, Geraldine. Hi, good morning, everyone. So I'm Geraldine. I work at Yorkshire Sport Foundation um, and have the pleasure of working with Jules. So I'm in the data and insight team. Great. In another room. <laughs> Thanks, Geraldine. Um, George, can I come to you next? Yeah, sure. Morning, everyone. Um, so I'm relatively new to the Open Active community. I'm, I'm co-founder of uh, Find My Facility, and I'll be presenting today on uh, the work we do as a, as a business and, and how we've integrated with Open Active uh, Open Data. Great. Thank you, George. Uh, Grace? Hi. Yeah, um, so I'm Grace. I work for Summers Out within the Team Sports Partnership as their uh, Open Data Project Officer, which basically just means I um, coordinate the activity finder at SAS. Brilliant. Thank you, Grace. Uh, James. Hello, I'm uh, James. I have adopted and engaged with Open Active. Um, <laughs> I am a consultant software developer uh, working for a company called Courtside Hubs, uh, formerly Premier Tennis. Um, and we implemented Open Active Spec and Open Booking Spec on their booking system last year. And then this year have plugged it into a bunch of people and are actively receiving bookings through it. So. Fantastic. Thank you very much, James. Uh, great to see you here. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Zach, another new new member of the group. Morning, uh, everyone. So I've just joined London Sports as a project manager in the digital tech and innovation team. Um, and we do some work with Open Active around open sessions and, and get active um, that we have, which is an activity finder. And so I'm looking forward to, to hearing more about uh, about what you guys are doing. Great, thank you. And uh, yeah, hopefully once Zach's had the opportunity to get his uh, get his bearings and his feet under the table, Zach will be um, talking at this group in a, in a few meetings time about some of the work that London Sport have been doing. So that, that should be really interesting to hear what they've been up to. Um, brilliant, thank you everyone. I think I got everyone, apologies if I missed anyone, but I don't think I have. Um, we're 
Just got a, a quick glance at what we've got on the agenda today. As George mentioned, he'll be um, talking us through um, some of the work he's been doing with his company, Find My Facility. So that should be really good. And then we've got Darren and possibly Howard, but mainly led by Darren here, um, who's going to be showcasing um, some of the work that they've been doing on the Data Quality Explorer and um, sort of giving you a bit of a demo so um, you can maybe um, have a bit of play with it yourselves and, and hopefully it'll be useful for you in, in the work you're doing uh, around Open Active. So should be a really good session, hopefully. And um, without further ado, I uh, will pass over to George. George, I don't know if you've got any slides or anything you want to share, so I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. Yeah, I do, Tim. I'll just flash them up now. Let me know if you have any problems uh, sharing, but hopefully you should have permissions. Yep, that looks like it's Can coming through. That? Cool. Yep, that's coming through great. Uh, great. So, um, look, welcome uh, and thanks for letting me jump on the call. Um, uh, I just want to say thanks to Tim for, for letting me present. Um, I'm a, I'm a co-founder of Find My Facility. We've been running a couple of years now and, and you, you can see the tagline on the screen there. So we're very much a marketplace. We're more consumer focused, I, I would argue. Uh, but but we do deal with both sides of the marketplace and we really want to break down the barriers for for entering sport and accessing sport across the uk i'm a keen sportsman myself so i sort of feel the pain as, as much as anyone within the industry so um that's our tagline find a book sporting uh, facilities and classes fast and easy well i suppose why we do it so that so that you've all got a bit of a, a background um i feel those is a bit of a pitch deck but but also uh, to introduce some of the challenges we faced and, and the good things that we've come across with Open Active. So from uh, two sides of the marketplace, really, that you can see user and facility there. So one, break down the barriers um, with, with the aim of increasing sport participation across the UK, across all age groups, uh, mostly England based. Uh, and, and for one reason, really, so that people can people can have a, an active, healthy lifestyle, which which, as we know, it's, it's no, no news that it, it reduces health conditions. But from the facility side, uh, we want to increase exposure to the marketplace. We're very conscious that we've come across a lot of facilities that maybe haven't got the resourcing or the funding uh, to be able to increase their online presence uh, at, at the lower end of the spectrum. So that that links to our sort of find functionality, which I'll go through in a bit more detail. And then and then secondly, on the facility side, we want to we want to improve revenue. Um, we're here to help you. Uh, and hopefully we can uh, increase the amount of or decrease, sorry, the amount of missed booking opportunities that you experience within the marketplace. Uh, and that really links to our, our booking feature. Um, so the, the facts, I think, speak for themselves. Um, this is a bit of background research that I did, uh, and it's taken from UK Active Digital Futures in 2022. I'm not sure if there's a 2023 release out yet, but uh, I'm not going to go through every line in detail. But it, essentially, it proves the point that uh, online presence is is um, doing okay, but there's definitely room for improvement within the, within the industry, particularly within the mobile app uh, space. And the 82% of facilities are, are feeding back that their online presence could be improved, uh, and that's actually an increase um, from 2021. So uh, I think there's there's some work to be done within that space, and hopefully we can we can assist facilities in in achieving that. So what what we do, um, I suppose, is the how. We are a sports facility marketplace. Uh, we are relatively simple at this stage. We just allow customers, we present information to customers from multiple data sources, including Open Active, um, from their data feeds to allow a customer to find, view, contact and book any facility. Uh, and it's agnostic of sport and it's agnostic of uh, what you're interested in. So we, we sort of uh, accommodate all the different sports across the UK. I think that uh, sums up to about 210 different sports, which some of them I've never even heard of um so um that that's what that's what the tagline is um and and we want to ultimately make it as easy to book a sporting facility uh, as it is to book a flight um i think within any other industry there's there's always a go-to marketplace um you think of the travel industry you think of the hotel industry there's always some um, places that conveniently aggregate that information for you and present you with a with a convenient um solution that's that's affordable and hopefully we can aim to achieve that um, within the sports industry to do that we we, we work with facilities uh, we offer three packages essentially that gives a facility options as to how far down the pipeline that they want to uh, interact with the user uh, everything from sort of appearing top of the search results all the way through to end-to-end uh, -end booking integration which which basically leads a customer to book a class without ever leaving the application 
but ultimately we're here to tailor the product we're not we're not um designing a product that i think is successful we're hopefully improving the product with the open active community that can that can solve problems for both sides of the marketplace um so i suppose that the, the devil's in the detail how how we do that is um we aggregate a few different data sources notably three at this stage so the first of which is is active places power uh, which gives us our physical sites uh, it's sports england sponsored i believe and audited so uh, over 20,000 um, sporting facilities across the uk that are registered on there uh, and that gives us our physical locations of where you can access any particular type of sport and then where open active data feeds uh, really usefully leans in is that we overlay that information of particular classes onto those sites with a bit of matching technology uh, to ensure that whatever class is appearing within the open active data feed is is occurring at a particular site within the UK geographically. Uh, and then we present that to the customer in the mobile application so that uh, a, a user can find a nearby site that has a class, the filtering as to what particular class that is. Uh, if they're interested in it and then give them the contact information, the timings, the accessibility uh, to then go ahead and, and uh, participate in that class. And then the third data source that we've more recently integrated with, we've worked quite heavily with IMIN, uh, which I'm sure some of you are, are, are aware of their team, but we consume their data to present, again, further information on classes, or I think they call them events and um, facilities. Uh, and the intention of that is to really take it through to the booking integration end uh, once they onboard facilities through the through the booking softwares that they work with. So very much an aggregator that presents a lot of information um, to the customer uh, with a sort of in-depth filtering as to exactly what they want to appear in their search results. I suppose that's the team. There's no point going through it in great detail, but I'm, I'm representing the team on behalf of FMF here. Um, We've got a, a three developers that work heavily uh, on our product and then a couple supporting the marketing side. Uh, and I think we've come on a long way in two years in, in presenting a product to the market. So I suppose that the reason for the um, the reason for the call and, and the presentation is how we actually physically integrate with, with Open Active. I, I'd probably start by saying we're completely reliant on open data. So um, the more data we have, the better access and, and um, variability that the customer can access um, it's again agnostic to sport so uh, we do consume every type of data feed that you guys publish which is which is really positive positive. and i'll sort of caveat that by saying that i think the industry in my personal opinion and my experience has some sort of ground to make up compared to others um, but saying that the integration that we have had through the technical documentation has been really smooth um, with the developers that i've got working on the project they've never really had any issues um, with implementation, it seems like a progressive documentation pack and that um, with their experience, they've not had to contact anyone directly, which is great. I think the two the two big challenges that we faced really is the quality assurance naturally as you as you improve or increase the number of uh, or the the quantity of open data that you consume, the accuracy and reliability reduces. I think uh, for us, particularly within our industry, the customer satisfaction is completely reliant on the reliability, the accuracy, uh, and the nature of the data that we present to the customer. So it's on us yeah. to make sure that that data is up to date. And I suppose my plea would be that uh, to publishers of the data to, to ensure that it's as, as accurate as can be so that we can help you help us in that sense and that uh, customers can access uh, facilities and, and not be disappointed when when they turn up to a class and it's it's not it's not necessarily on at the time that it was displayed or the contact information is up to date or whatever that may be. But I know that's always a challenge. I think from from Open Active's point of view, you have a considerable number of data sources to consume, and that uh, the, the quantity of that sometimes over overarches the quality. So that's that's one of the challenges. And this and the second challenge that we faced is a simple, hopefully a simple one to solve is that the rel the relevance to marketplaces. So when we were going through the integration, as, as we all know, there are uh, a number of players within within the industry, booking softwares, data publishers, sort of your local gyms, leisure operators, uh, marketplaces, and then all the way through to end users. So I think making it immediately obvious in the tech technical documentation exactly uh, which section this is applicable to, uh, and then what is in and out of scope for that um, for that particular section. So the example that I've that I've noted down is that um, when we were going through the, 
the process of trying to implement the open booking API, it was sort of halfway through the, the roadmap that we realized that it's completely reliant on the permissions and the authority from both the facility and also the booking software company that that facility um, uses. So that's just one example that we've come across. And I think um, making that solution would be extremely useful to uh, someone that's not from a technical background like myself who go, dives into the documentation to work out uh, exactly what's feasible and what's not. Um, and again, happy to take questions on that and, and have a discussion. But that's it. I thought I'll keep it short and sweet. So thanks for the time. Thanks for listening. If you've got any questions, then by all means, reach out and, and hopefully we can have a bit of a discussion as to uh, what I've just spoke about. Brilliant. Thank you very much, George. That that was really good, really interesting. Um, and definitely yeah, a lot of overlap with uh, with other organisations in the, in the community as well. I see Jules straight away has, has jumped in and raised his hand. So I'll go straight to you, Jules. I think you're all muted, Jules. Sorry. <laughs> I'm glad you can't look brief. Uh, in terms of the places, do you use active places site ID, George? Uh, yes, we do. So we we consume all of the data as it's structured in JSON. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it's because we were taught. I've always banged on about there isn't an open directory standard. So mm. while there are activities going on, there isn't mm. one for a club database. Yes. But if there is a standard coming in, then actually using the site ID would help because you would own a database and we'd own a database, there'd be a lot more overlap. Yeah. So that would using the site ID would help uh, manage that. So yeah, now that sounds exciting. Hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Jules. Uh, James, uh, you've got your hand up. Hi there. I saw on your diagram you consume um, data from I'm in, hmm. um, and. What I thought I'd say is that uh, they also consume our data and also have integrated open booking with us. And we are also in the list. So if you're both talking to us directly and consuming from I'm in, you'll get us twice. And hopefully that's not a problem. No, not at all. So uh, I've got quite uh, quite a good working relationship with um, with uh, Dom and, and, and Nish at uh, I'm in. And, and we're very aware that they consume your data as much as we do. So. Yeah. We, we sort of deconflict that in the process. I think they do a bit of quality assurance on the open active data feeds in the process of consuming the data. So that, that helps us, um, which is great. But yeah, we're well aware of it and, and we're working to get around that problem. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thanks, James. Were there any other uh, questions for George? Give people a bit of time to uh, to think. I don't know if uh, I don't want to put you on the spot if you're if you're not quite ready to to share anything about it yet. But I don't know if Darren and Howard, just on Jules's point, you wanted to say anything about the work you've been doing in terms of um, club club organisation stuff. Um, thank you, Tim. You don't want to put me on the spot, but uh, you got to do it. You got to do it. Um. Well, I did, I did give you the option to... Uh, to no, no, I think it's video. really interesting. And obviously, we've got um, Zach as well, you know, I think from London Sports. So I think there's that that is where it's it's an idea we're exploring now. Uh, I think it'll come, it'll come to life when Darren does his little demo. You know, I think we'll, we'll see that kind of, that club find a view and the potential for that. And, and we can have a conversation around that in a little while. That's my getting out backing out of it to be discussed cool maybe, maybe i preempted uh darren's presentation then. <laughs> in, in which case uh i'll just give uh one last call for for any questions for george just before we we move on to said darren Okay, no problem. Well, th thanks again, George. Um, and then I'm sure if, if anyone wants to follow up with you um, after the call or, or anything, then and you're you're um, available in Open Active's uh, Slack space as well. So people can find you there. If if anyone um, here or or watching the recording has any questions, then uh, then please do follow up with George or or get in touch with us, and we can we can connect you with George. Sure. Thanks, Tim. Great. Okay. In which case, um, I'll hand over to you, Darren, and I think I'm in charge of your slide, so I will share my screen again. Thank you. Um, yeah, two nice um, segues, I guess, that have just come out from George's talk.
both, both an entry point and an exit point for my little spiel. Um, the exit point being the talk about the kind of club finder functionality, as I'll come to in the, the final uh, couple of slides within this uh, little talk. And the entry point being the conversation about data challenges and data assurance, data quality, things like that. Um, so that is what this is all about. And this has been my own kind of um, introductory project to Open Active World. I've been with uh, the group since the start of the year and more in earnest since around February time. And so it's been one of my uh, challenges working with Howard to sort of dive in to have a look at the, the raw data feeds as they currently stand and um, assess them for quality based on uh, certain metrics as I'll come to. Um, to actually just make sure that they are as usable as possible for everyone involved in the rest of the pipeline. So um, people and groups such as, as George and Final Life Facility, as well as others, leading all the way through to the end users that just want to find an opportunity, book it, and then go and um, do their thing. So there is clearly a need to ensure good data quality in any initiative uh, around data, uh, open access being no exception. And and um, a little bit before my time with Open Active, um, data quality framework was developed with input from the community um, over the course of a number of calls, um, guided by the Office of Office of National Statistics Best Practices. And so there's also, um, it came to light, a, a clear desire for data to be viewable for people across a wider spectrum than it was uh, previously. Um, not only those on the technical development side, but those on management that just want to have a, a rough view of what the feeds are, are looking like um, and anyone in between, basically, including those just curious about Open Active. They happen to stumble across it um, and think, oh, what's this about? Is there an easy window in, that we can provide to them that they can just splash around with the data, get some sort of high level metrics and visuals and, and, and have at least a gut feel for it? um prior to sort of taking any further deep dives should they wish and existing tools of which there are a number already have really kind of prioritized the the development size and rightly so you know we have to get the development right the developers need um, access to the real deep nuts and bolts of the information to actually make sure that anything is going to work at all so um on that if we go to the next slide um, this gives a good example of one of those um, developer-oriented tools. Um, so this is the validator in which um, someone can put their feed and you get back uh, a list of the, the raw information and any kind of issues and uh, errors that it has so that they can say, all oh, right, okay, that's where I've got a problem. And they can take a deep dive and fix it, make sure that it's working for everyone. As you see, there's there's no kind of visuals there. It's a little bit um, opaque for those that are just approaching uh, Open Active, maybe for the first time. Those that are a little bit curious, those not on the tech side, those that don't need this granular level of detail. So that's not really um, the full kind of spectrum of, of people that might be interested in the data. We were wondering, can we uh, take a slightly different approach? So if we jump onto the the next slide, this gives an overview of um, a new tool that we've produced um, called the Data Visualizer slash Data Quality Explorer. It, the URL at which it sits, you can see at the top right of the page. So please feel free to click on that. Uh, visit at visualizer.openactive.io, play around, um, select the drop downs, uh, click the buttons. You can't break it. And e even better if you can, uh, because please just drop us an email at that uh, address at the top of the page, hello at openactive.io. Um, this is a beta release. Um, can't be absolutely gold standard guaranteed that it's completely bug free, but we would like to wheedle out any bugs that do exist. So if you find um, that you have any issues with it, or even uh, any user experience issues, even if they're not particularly sort of technical issues, then please do let us know we're about to approach a next wave of, of iteration. So what do we see here on this landing page? Um, well, firstly, is the, the, there aren't so many kind of visual metrics, but um, it kind of lays the the land for what you see when you actually do choose a particular feed. So in the top left, uh, we see a data provider drop down menu. Now at the moment, this is showing um, some basic information on this page, um, which is harvested from all open active feeds. So um, it's been automated, gone through the feed one by one, um, taken a, a rough count of all of their opportunities, um, both from the kind of series level to the more kind of granular session level and just 
taken all those numbers, added them all up and said, what does open active ecosystem look like as a whole? And we get these two um, metrics out, uh, as you see in the bar in the middle, from the discovery side to the booking side, that kind of 67,000 and the 724 odd thousand. Now, there is a caveat here is that this being a beta release tool is that each one of these feeds when we read in the opportunities, when we list all the items, each feed is capped at a read of 25,000 items. So these numbers aren't actually reflective of the full set of possible items that we have in the ecosystem. In fact, that number is much higher. Um, uh, again, this is kind of like beta metrics, but you see where we're going. And there are some technical reasons why we've capped it for kind of performance issues. But that cap will be removed sooner or later, and then we'll see the, the, the full view there. And the, the, the total count of all opportunities um, should be kind of plus in the, the kind of million mark. We're in the sort of six figures at that point. So if we jump on to the uh, next slide, this gives a better idea that if you choose uh, one particular provider in that drop down menu on the left hand side, the kind of more detailed level and uh, visuals that you actually get from that. This is what we really try to sort of drill into that uh, individuals providers can come into this tool and check to sort of see how it's working for them, both those on the development side, those on the management side, and again, those who, who are just curious about wanting to splash around through uh, the open active ecosystem. After they've uh, chosen that first menu, their uh, particular provider, they then choose one of their feeds on that data type field, they hit go, they get a load of messages. I'm not doing a live demo here because it, it will take uh, a few seconds, but you can please feel free to mess around on, on that tool. And then they get this lovely kind of visual set of, um, information right right across the, the middle of the screen and we've tried to make it like a spectrum to show the sort of flow of information that that the key information kind of not just what's in the specs but what is the the bare bones that's needed to take someone from discovering an opportunity just information about it kind of what is it what's its name what's its um activity id it should be in the, the official activity list what's its description all the way through to the more practical information that someone actually needs to have to understand where it is, like postcode or coordinates, when it is, um, does it have a future date? There could be things in feeds which are actually in the past and which are no longer relevant. And is there a URL that can um, uh, a data user that's actually producing a platform can use to take a uh, activity seeker straight to booking? And then that final pink squiggly graph that you see on the right hand side just shows those um, future dates. As you can see, it kind of flattens off in this particular issue because uh, a number of dates uh, just don't exist. The spikes you see there, if you drilled into this particular issue, are just basically because of the days of the week. There are more um, opportunities from this particular feed in the sort of Monday to Friday period, and then it drops down on, on weekends. So these particular activities are more weekday rather than weekend activities, and that's that kind of spiky behavior. So we see a number of other um, options and buttons around the screen. Um, towards the top left, you see three big gray buttons. These are filters that we can drill into, just show particular organizers, um, particular locations, particular activities, if there are multiple activities which are there. And then across the, the very bottom of the screen, you see four little gray toggle buttons. Um, they say show all and then show issues on the right and uh, on the left and right hand side, respectively, of each of those toggle buttons. And they allow um, developers in particular to kind of just highlight um, the, the items in their feeds which uh, have these particular issues, those which don't have postcodes, those which don't have future dates. And then they can kind of drill in if they need to and fix those problems. If we go um, to the next slide, this is what we actually see if we scroll further down in the window. Um, that we have a set of six tabs that allow uh, different views of the data, which are kind of brought together from the, the raw level to a more kind of human friendly level. Um, so first, there are some summary information on this live data tab, just about the, the items one by one, ID, name, activity, the dates and the locations and so on. If we go to the next slide, we see this next tab, which is JSON tab. So this is the raw data, again, more kind of pitched towards the developers. And this is what we bring out and we weave together to actually produce that first tab that we saw previously in the kind of more human friendly way. If we go to the next slide, we see the next tab, which is API calls. Again, this is kind of more geared towards the developers. Exactly what has the tool read in as it's gone through its, its munging through of, of, of everything for a particular feed. If we go to the next tab, and we've got some 
Uh, again, more human friendly uh, information. We've pulled that in from that raw JSON level to just have a look at that organizers in, a, in an overview table. And then one more, if we go to the locations tab, next one, we've done the same for the locations. Um, again, you know, some uh, developers, some providers might wish there to be more information than uh, here than just the bare bones. Having a name and coordinates is all very well and good, but it'll be great if there are, for example, URLs, email addresses, phone numbers, and so on, to really allow um, people that are making activity finders and, and other tools to show as much information as possible to the users. So they can quickly find out exactly what they have in their feed and maybe consider sort of patching it up with extra information if they feel the need to. And then finally, we go to the next slide. Um, we see that same location information if it had uh, coordinates presented on a map because everyone loves maps. Um, they're very visual. They give you a nice intuitive feeling of, of how uh, your feeds kind of spread geographically. You can make sure that they're all appearing firstly in the UK and that nothing's in the South Pole. It's a bit of a long trek to go on your kayak in the weekend or whatever you, it, they do in the South Pole. I'm not sure if there's any gyms there, but might be one or two. Long way to go for it. And each one of these pins you can click on, it's not showing here on the screenshot, you can click on the pin and it'll show you again that kind of summary information that we saw in the location tab. So uh, the, the name, the address, the phone number, and so on. And these are the um, locations which are just for one particular provider. You see this particular provider has a really good spread right across the UK. Um, at some are more local than others, as everyone here on this call knows. Um, so this is what we kind of see as even though these items are geographical, they're also related to opportunities which are temporal. They're, they're, they, they're events which happen at a particular time. So there's a stream of information, something's happening on Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. And when it comes to a club finder, I'm just interested in the information about organizations and locations. So this is really kind of the bare bones entry point information that um, some people actually want to show. They might not necessarily want to make available um, through our system, uh, any particular events that they have, they might not have any on the, the schedule currently, but they still want to make themselves aware, make themselves known, their names and their, their presence. So we're working um, to make sure that the documentation, the specification is worded in such a way that just this base information is going to be allowable for those people that want to make their clubs known, um, to be known through these open active feeds. As we can see, it's certainly technically possible, but currently this information is also tied with time information, and we want to allow people to just have this positional information. So if we have one more slide, I know that we had uh, plenty of time for this talk, but I probably, I think I've underrun anyway. Um, but you can read more here at these two blogs. So um, the first was produced a, a number of months ago, shortly after that initial data quality framework was defined in collaboration with the community. And the second was uh, our launch post when we actually released this tool that was based on that discussion as well. Um, in the chat, in the Zoom chat, I'll also put a link to the data quality framework itself that came out of these discussions on which this was based. Let me just put that in the chat now. And again, if anyone wants to kind of drill into these details, then please feel free. But the first part of port of call, I would really recommend just playing around with that and visualize a tool. Um, like I said, we're very open and welcoming to receive feedback on it. Um, we spent a number of months working it out. We've still got a number of known things that we'd like to do to improve in the future. In particular, as I mentioned, releasing that 25,000 cap to make sure that we, we're getting all the information and uh, have those numbers as high as possible and to get the, the, the broadest and most accurate view of open active at any one particular time. So I hope that's been useful. Um, I've taken you in, the, I've, I've tried to present the story why we've done this and show you that it's a tool, not only for the, the kind of granular developer level, but also a high level that you can just get a quick overview. And we've been, uh, we've tried to inject the visuals in such a way that make this as intuitive as possible. Thanks very much. Brilliant, thank you, Darren. Um, there was a lot to, for everyone to digest there, so um, I hope I hope everyone um, was following along. I think I think, although um, it can be a bit scary for people who are not from a technical background, I think hopefully this this tool will help um, everyone to in the community to to have a bit more of a play around with um, 
some of the data and um, particularly some of those tabs Darren showed along the bottom um, related to kind of uh, locations and the, and the map and the, and the different organizers within each feed hopefully that will be be really useful for for um, people as as you work uh, in your areas or um, in you know what whatever space that you're trying to promote open active um, were there any questions for uh, Darren or um, around it looks like George you've got your hand up so I'll come to come to you yeah, Darren, thanks. Um, <clears throat> I've had a play around actually since we last spoke a couple of weeks ago and it's, it's, um, the feedback's genuinely really positive. I uh, don't naturally read JSON in my spare time, so uh, being able to uh, see the data visualised is really good. I'm not sure, I suppose, being a marketplace and, and consumer focus, is is there any plan to um, differentiate between the URLs, the booking URLs that uh, take a, a, a user to a pay-to-play uh, venue or does it take the user to, or is there within that data source, it also takes the user to a member's login for a particular facility. Facility. So does it, I suppose, differentiate between those two, uh, or is it just reporting on statistics that has a physical URL and it, it takes them somewhere, if you like? And the, the ultimate um, URL that we are trying to encourage the community to kind of uptake is one that really goes kind of as directly to a booking page as possible as opposed to like a, an entry portal from which they also need to kind of search again for yeah. that particular um event type and time and location um so it's that having that information directly you know as square front square and center as possible in their feed just allows um, people making tools such as yourself to just grab it and then go straight to that page and then inject their information to, to obtain that one that what they want to. I mean, as you know, within the feeds, there can be many different URLs of different types. You know, the organization mm -hmm. itself might just have a URL um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But having that direct URL um, is the primary goal. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Great. Thank you, George. Um, anyone else have any questions for Darren? Like. I'll I'll just uh, just add a few things. Um, that was really good, Darren. Thanks. Um, and I just wanted to say, so yeah, the I don't think we're we're finished. That's that would be the thing. So the set of measures that we're reporting on there are based on the the initial. We've got this core find and book use case, uh, and those are the kind of things that we're, we're reporting on there. Does everyone have the the who, what, where, when kind of information to make a decision about whether or not an activity is right for them um but the point of the ons's data quality reporting framework and the one that we've kind of adopted is to is to use that same approach to explore other use cases so or more specific challenges that people are having and feedback that we're getting so one of the ones that we're interested in is the um do people with specific disability or accessibility needs have the information they need to decide whether or not an activity is right for them. So we're going to, you know, do another round of exploring what what are the right questions to ask of the data to be able to answer that. You know, and that might result in another set of of measures, percentages, or whatever that we uh, we're showing. So I want to say that that it's not it's not done and dusted. That there's more to do around you know understanding quality from different perspectives. Um, and then we, we hinted at that kind of, it shows that the existing data structure can deliver a kind of club finder style output product, whatever you want to call it. So we've got some questions to ask there about what's the right way forward um, to take that, you know, to take that forward. And one of the drivers is that some people, some organizations, some activity providers would like to be part of Open Active, they'd like to be found in the open data but they're not in a position where they can deliver date and time level sessions you know they're not they can't go right down from this is who we are this is where we are these are the activities that we do and on thursday at six o'clock you can you can do this you know they're not their it systems or you know data maturity whatever in the organization just isn't there but so that club finder approach may provide an opportunity to get them more discoverable um, and we've shown that it can happen within the existing data structure. So we've got some questions there to explore at the W3C um, 
working group i think the community group there we need to we need to explore that so we'll be working on how to how to take that forward uh, darren's been drafting a proposal about how we can use the existing structure um but we need to start that conversation i know that you know there are some concerns around um how we're going to maintain the quality of that data uh, and the timeliness you know i think that's one thing about the um the existing feeds in theory is supposed to help keep the data right up to date now we did see there that uh, there are old sessions and events still appearing in the data and that's one of the things that the the data quality explorer can give you a view on um but those are the only things i wanted to say great thank you howard and uh jules has just added in the chat that um I don't know if that's a kind of question or a statement. <laughs> He's also said about maybe um, whether there's an opportunity to include things like parks and green spaces um, as well. Well, when you have the uh, a club finder that's searching geography, then you'll go, well, this is your local park. These are your walking routes. And it opens up all that data as well. Great, thank you. And James just added there that uh, almost all of their venues are parks. I don't know if... Uh, <laughs> Is that, I assume that, is that kind of tennis courts within parks, James? <laughs> yeah, they operate facilities in parks on behalf of councils. So they run uh, court booking and tennis coaching on tennis courts in the parks at their venues. They run a couple of other things like um, indoor centres, um, but those are rare in the grand scheme of all the stuff they do. Um, they are actually in the process of building three new facilities, which are more complex than just tennis um, and have a range of different sports and offerings and things. Um, and then we hope to publish those on the feeds as and when the things get um, finished being built. So they're um, scheduled to be f started building this year and finished sometime next year. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, it seems like there's those kind of three different data types and there. there's the, the activities, the organizations and the locations or spaces and it's how we um how we connect all of those all those up together <laughs> my metaphor is it's the animals in the data zoo you want to go to the zoo but sometimes you want to see cats sometimes you want to see fish sometimes you want to see birds and they all need different enclosures that's my metaphor <laughs> wouldn't be an all, I, I can't i can't and that one isn't landing but um just to go <laughs> back with um, Tim's point, I think he said, you've got the people, the organization, you've got the activity and the location. With parks and green spaces, I, I, I'm struggling a little bit you know, in, in immediately to see which is the organization. Is the council who owns the park going to list that in the open data? You know, And the activities that could be performed there are, as, are pretty open-ended, aren't they? So it, that one, parks and green spaces, I, see, I know where you're coming from, and it makes sense, but it, it, there is a, you know, an extra challenge around listing those consistently and keeping it up to date. I guess uh, I know on a survey you have a kind of green space data set, so that's in my mind. But I don't want to go there yet. Let's start with the, um, let's start with helping people who want to get listed in Open Active but can't go down to the session level. Let's help get them out there first. Yeah, one step at a time. Cool. Uh, oh, James, you've got your hand up. I was just about to say any more questions and then. Um, yeah, just just filling in from, from what Howard said there. I'm uh, also part of another project called Local Gov Drupal, um, which is building a Drupal distribution for councils to use for their websites. So it is designed to operate everything a council needs. And so they have about 80 or 90 councils on board so far. Um, an interesting observation is an open active module for Drupal for the local gov distribution would probably deliver um, the ability for councils to list their stuff, you know? Um, so that's an interesting angle. There's, and the other way, if you had a consuming module for it, it would give the council the ability to list activities on their sites, which are operated by operators that have open active feeds. So that's just a, an interesting observation there. Interesting, yeah. Uh, I think the um, well, that might be well, my follow up with that one uh, on that one, James. The um, I know the council directories of like local services, things like well, the the open referral feed kind of uh, feeds into in some in some places. 
Mm. Might, might, I will have a conversation about that. I'll follow up with you. Yeah, I can uh, put you in touch with some of the people who run the local Gov Drupal project if that helps. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks very much. Great. Thanks, James. And yeah, good one for, for us to follow up with you after the call. Um, any other questions from uh, anyone for Darren and or Howard? Um, and also, I guess, as we're moving into the last five, ten minutes, whether there's any other business as well, if any, any other one, anyone has anything to raise. Jules has physically put his hand up. Many, many Retro. things, as usual. Well, hey, child of the 70s, mate. Um, uh, how do we feel about singing? Wait, are you are you asking us to put on, on this call? <laughs> uh, it's one of those things where activities. A lot when we talk to local authorities, they must say we want we have a finder for things that people want to do. Some are physical activities, some are creative, and singing is one of those that's kind of gateway drug into dancing, but is also not physical activity. So it's it's one of those ones that how wide we want to make it. Uh, and the other one are the muffin baskets park run. Have we heard anything yet? I'm just going to assume no. But also firstsports.com. Have you heard of them? Goodness. Lots, lots to cover there. And um, so... Uh, look, so sports has NGB uh, data. Uh, they do okay. football, I think it might be badminton. So they're the people who would be able to open data, but they haven't. I don't think they've been asked to open data yet, which seems a bit... You can think NGBs would be really champing at the bit. But I've spoken to some at First Sports and they are very good and they seem very keen. It just someone needs to say, come on, can you ask the NGBs? Can you open your data, please? Brilliant. Do you know any of the NGBs that are working with them? I'm sure. What was the one that we found that was several years out there? Is it badminton? There might be football as well, but they have a word with them because they are doing quite a bit of NGB work. Badminton had opened some of theirs, Jules, hadn't they? Had, but was that an old one that was a a five-year-old data and we couldn't find new ones because the badminton finder was built through this uh first sports not sure okay maybe, maybe that's one i can pick up with you after the cool jewels and, and we can uh, dig into that in a bit more bit more detail if that's okay um in terms of singing uh yes that is a kind of ongoing <laughs> challenge with the activity list about where where we draw the draw the line with what sort of physical activity and what's not physical activity um i can't remember off the top of my head whether whether singing is is on there or not but it certainly has been been proposed in the past um and we now uh chris who was here some of you may remember who who isn't um with the odi anymore he left in the summer uh, did some work around or quite a bit of work around the activity list and created um, with uh, the support of the W3C group um, uh, a kind of framework for deciding on um, activities. So I'm sure I, I can dig that out and share that with you. Um, yeah, do, do you remember, Howard, if that was published or did Chris just share that at W3C group? I can't remember if it was actually... I, the um <clears throat> yeah no so if you go um one of the main links on the open access website is what is the activity list or something like that um I'll try and put a link in the chat and that that explains the new process it's managed via the we 3 c committee but by exception so there's a set of questions to be asked um when someone suggests a new activity and there's a set of principles that we kind of agreed and and they, you know we were trying to be fairly inclusive and if there's an element of physical activity to it or it's associated with um physical activity um sport touching on well-being um then then we added it to the list i think you know so th th we've been quite quite generous in, in adding things um and i'm fairly sure that some aspects of singing singing acting also um you know are, have been added to the list so those are, you know, those are selectable in the drop downs, and um, you can tag activities with those. Cool. Thank you. How do you explain that much better than me? Um, did, was was there anything else, Jules? I think we covered. I think we covered all your points there. <laughs> um, was there anything from anyone else that anyone else would like to raise? 
There was just the update, as Jules mentioned, on Parker, and I think there was going to be a mm. conversation in September. So I don't know if that's happened or where that's at. Yes, uh, that is a good question. We are due to follow with that. I don't think there is any update yet. Um, but yeah, hope, hopefully there will be at some point. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think, I'm afraid, sorry to disappoint, but yeah, I don't think there's any update on that as of yet. Any other uh, questions or bits of any other business that anyone else would like to raise? Cool. Okay, well, in which case, um, even though we're a few minutes early, I think um, perhaps we can call the meeting to a close. Thank you very much for everyone uh, who has joined. It's been a really good session. Thank you, George, for presenting. Um, really interesting and uh, good to see you. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone else for joining. Um, good to see you all. Um, the next meeting, as usual, will be in a uh, fortnight's time. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you all there. Hope you all have a good weekend.